that has taken storm across the internet. New video taken by a bystander showing two men climbing the newly replaced southern border fence. This video prompted some criticism, but soon after its release, the Border Patrol said the system worked exactly as designed. Hmm. The National Border Patrol Council's vice president and Border Patrol agent Hector Garza joining us now. Nice to see you, sir. Appreciate it as always. So the fence is supposed to, or the wall is supposed to stop people from coming over. And now we have video of a guy coming over the new wall. Uh, what gives? So, so it's very important for us to realize that these drug cartels will always try anything to continue their drug smuggling, their human trafficking, uh, their human smuggling. They'll always try something. So that's why it's so important for us as Border Patrol agents to be able to have those resources like physical barriers, uh, proper manpower. But let's talk about this, Leland. This video shows that only one person made an illegal entry and not multiple people like we've seen in other, other areas where we don't have walls. So this wall actually it works, the technology, but not only that, the hard work hard work of that Border Patrol agent made a huge difference, and we made sure that this person was apprehended. This from the Washington Post uh, about a month and a half ago. Smugglers are sawing through new sections of Trump's border wall with power tools they're able to buy off the shelf. Is this a design flaw? What, what gives you? Because it seems like as the Border Patrol, you guys would want a wall that is impenetrable. Yeah, so th again, it just shows that drug cartels will try anything. What's important is that there are, these drug cartels will always try to uh, uh, jump the wall. They'll try to uh, build uh, bigger ladders. But guess what? That's not an excuse for us to stop uh, trying to secure the border. Right, but Physical barriers make I, a huge difference. I know we only have video of one person coming over, but you can't tell me that, that there hasn't been some that you haven't caught, right? Of course, there's, there's got to be people uh, along the entire uh, uh, border, but again, just because people, one guy is jumping the wall or 10 guys, that doesn't mean that we stop trying to secure the border. Well, but but uh, I actually, uh, nobody's arguing, hold on, nobody's arguing that it means uh -huh. you stop trying, Correct. but it might argue that what was done in building this wall isn't working. Yeah, it's definitely working. I can tell you for a fact that we're not seeing groups of tens, twenties of people jumping this wall. Let's think about it. Not everybody can climb that wall. Not everybody can rappel down that 30-foot wall. That's almost difficult. I can tell you that I would have a hard time climbing that wall. So in this case, one person did come across. I'm sure there's others that, that have tried and have been successful, but this wall is actually working, Leland. So we have the idea that this part of the wall is working. As you look at the border, and obviously not everywhere either needs a wall or is it practical to build a wall, especially as you deal with some of the terrain out there, what percentage of the area that can be secured by a wall has been? How much more, shall we say, is needed? So we've, we've talked about maybe about a 50 percent of the entire southern border, uh, and, and that, that, uh, those figures change depending on the tactics used by the smugglers. Uh, but, but let's talk about the, uh, the wall uh, in the RGV Valley. We have a section in the RGV uh, sector in the Brownsville area that that is a very secure part of the border. But then you compare that to places like Donna, Texas, where we don't have a wall, and that's where all the illegal entries are coming in. So the other thing is that these walls also show, Leland, is that once a group commits to coming to the United States and, and jump that wall, that's what they're going to do. Guess what? Now they, they, one of the, uh, the strategies that they use is to run back to Mexico and get away. In this case, they're not going to be able to evade capture. And again, the technology worked. The manpower that was there, the, the, the detection technology, the fiber optic cable that we have in those real, areas. Real quick and before, a 30-foot wall is very good. Real quick before we go, I want to ask you about the reports of this 16-year-old boy who died in custody. Uh, tragic, no doubt. Nobody wants these kinds of things to happen. Have there... What has not changed what still needs to change after we learned about deaths in custody, after we learned about minors in custody, what hasn't changed and who hasn't been held accountable that allowed this to happen again? So one big difference right now that we have, Lenin, is that now uh, our numbers of apprehensions are actually down. Uh, when this death but, happened, but, if, this but if, numbers are, if numbers are down, shouldn't there be sure. even less of an excuse for somebody to die? Yeah, but when this happened with with this boy, we were being overwhelmed. We had a lot of people. We were over capacity. Uh, we could not send any anybody to uh, health and human services. We couldn't send them uh, to foster homes. We couldn't do any of that because there was no space available. Our border patrol agents had no choice but to house these people in our in our border patrol stations, which were not designed for long term detention. Again, this is the result of Congress not acting and not giving us the proper facilities and the proper funding. Remember, we're, we've been asking for funding for such a long time, and this falls squarely on the hands of Congress. Hmm.
All right. Well, we will take that issue to them, sir. Appreciate your time and your thoughts. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Leland. Take care, sir.